Excellent. So then the last thing, as always, is the tier list. Your tier list will have a geography theme. It will be the seven continents of the world. And we are, in your opinion, judging them against their utility or their importance with respect to the English national curriculum. Um, and obviously it's completely subjective. You know, there are multiple answers. Um, and I suppose the hard part will be between the both of you agreeing on where each of them go. Um, Victoria, this is your first time with a tier list. I'm just going to explain S is your highest tier, your God tier. You know, this is extremely fundamentally important. And then A is still a very good item. B is about average and C is below average or in this case, not as in, not very important at all. Um, and so the first is North America. What do you guys reckon? And I guess that has to go in S, doesn't it? Because, I, mm, well, you can choose between North or South America, but I mean, it is one of the ones that the national curriculum says you have to. Cover. One of the ones, isn't it? Yeah. So S or A? Yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's any other utility besides that it's just on the, I think I would go A, because I think you can probably do more with South America than you could do with North America in terms of how you could link it to, I'm thinking particularly, you know, uh, Darwin and Wallace and the evolution um, topic in science, which, um, you know, just links up so beautifully and so wonderfully. Um, so I'm, I would I would say A. I'm happy with A. If you are, um, Victoria. Yeah. Excellent. That was, that was very diplomatic. And um, from both of you. And um, next one is South America. I think we're happy with. Well, I'd certainly go for S. Lots of um, interesting things that you can look at. It's got every uh, geographical feature that you want to look at, uh, links to other areas of the curriculum, Amazon rainforest, which gets, you know, it's always, you know, it's like a prototype for uh, primary geography. Um, I would go S, I think, for that one. No, I'm just thinking, like, I agree, but then I'm just thinking... I'm just trying to think a bit more about like, why is why is do I think South America is more important than North America? Because like, my instinct would have been yes, I'd choose South America first. And then I'm thinking, yeah, if you had to pick one, I guess you'd go with South America first, wouldn't you? Yeah, if you had to pick. I think for the, I think a a teacher who perhaps didn't read much up on geography would get more out of it for their children mm -hmm. if they chose to do South America over North America without much additional wider reading perhaps. Yes. So I think that's maybe why I go S over A for, for South America compared to North America. Yeah. Like I say, it's, um, it's totally subjective. Um, and if it's just something you feel, um, and you can feel its importance, that's fine. The, um, as an aside, the sheer scale of South America really freaks me out because I have no way of, I don't, you know, I've, I know people in Venezuela and Colombia and when they describe the journey to, to the coast, you know, you're, you're talking, you know, four or five hours from somewhere that looks really close on a map, but actually is quite, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I just can't get my head around the sheer scale of some of these um, these land masses, you know, I think it's supposed to have been from Ireland and it being a particularly <laughs> small <Yeah>. land mass, <laughs> uh, you know, scale is something I struggle Hopefully with. Hopefully this will uh, improve South American listenership as well now. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to cut that bit especially. And then <laughs> we have um, Europe. That was good, hasn't it? Were you going for Victoria S? Yeah. Isn't that the only one 
I mean, you have to cover it, so it's got to be yes, doesn't it? That's the one that's actually specified that you have to cover in the national curriculum. So, apart from the fact True. that we live as well. <laughs> yeah, I think for those reasons you have to. And I think as well, um, with the whole like Brexit thing, when that was all happening, loads of children actually thought we were physically leaving the continent of Europe and that somehow we would be doing some sort of weird um, jump. <laughs> so, you know, we'd be more towards the middle of the Atlantic as well. So I think getting them to understand, well, not to understand, just making that distinction between Europe as the continent and the European Union as a political union is you know, quite an important um, jump in understanding for them. Yeah. And I mean, links to history as well, just like the Romans and Greeks. And I think just the variety that, and I'm sure there is that variety in other continents, actually, but I suppose it's more because it's closer to us. The variety of climates you can still have just within Europe is huge, isn't it? So, Yeah, excellent. Good stuff. And then we've got Africa. Mm. I'm thinking obviously it's not one that's mentioned explicitly in keys in the primary curriculum I think it's worth doing if you're going to invest the time to do it right and so that leaves me with hovering it between A or B. Because mm. I think doing it, doing it, but doing it wrong will cause more harm than deciding not to teach it at all. Because obviously the, you have got links um, to other parts of um, the curriculum I know we look at, um, obviously there's the Egyptians, we look at um, when we do it in year, we look at geography in year two, I think it is, and we look at Kenya, um, specifically a city in Kenya. So we look at Nairobi, and so we kind of make sure that we don't fall into that trap of all Africa is poor. And oh, look, you know, in Nairobi, they do actually have buildings made out of um, you know, concrete and glass and skyscrapers and all of that kind of thing. I'm going... <laughs> like how much depth you're talking about looking at, yeah. it, wasn't it really? I think it's really important for children to have an overview of Africa as a continent and the variety and like, understanding the, yeah. But my you... heart says A, but my gut says B. <laughs> what does yours say, Victoria? Yeah, I think I'm probably the same. So we're going to listen to our hearts, we're going to listen to our guts. <laughs> Do you want me to put it going to go in between? Are we allowed to do that? Yeah, I suppose it's a time factor that's stopping. Like if it, if I wasn't thinking of time factors of what could people realistically cover, I'd just put it in A. But you can't cover everything you might want to cover if you're actually thinking practically what would you include in your curriculum. You might not Exactly. Be and if your way into it was like, oh, we're doing The Lion King, like that's our topic title. Like, no, like cut it. Like don't bother at all. Like you're not going to get anything valuable from that whatsoever. Um, yeah, okay, I'm happy with A slash B, if that's allowed. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's a visual representation of what you guys have explained. Um, and then we've got Asia. Where would you put Asia? Maybe the same. Same. 
because although it, and although it doesn't specifically mention Asia in the national curriculum, when you're looking at a lot of the physical features, I mean, you'd end up like, perceiving a look at the Himalayas when you do mountains, things like that. But I always end up teaching children things about Asia, even if it's not explicitly a unit in my curriculum in that year, I always end up including it. This year I've done stuff on Japan and Nepal already, just instantly linked to other countries, so. Yeah, and my gut says, obviously, if you're doing um, the Shang Dynasty in uh, via history, your mm. non-European civilization, then I think could go into the fully deserved the A bracket um, with that kind of asterisk next to it. Um, also really interesting, obviously, you have Russia itself as a country which spans um, the two continents. Um, so that as a point of reference is quite interesting so i think you know we when we silo things off into the continents etc i think children can kind of quite see you know there's this clear definitive mm -hmm. line where one country you know it's almost like done on they draw their lines on the political maps as opposed to actually looking at the the, the plates and stuff which more make up the um, the continents i think for me if you were doing um the shang dynasty for your um, history unit, um, I'd go for A. So I guess if you're not, then the most logical place for it is that A, B represented, uh, A, B line. So you're both happy with in the middle again? Yeah. The really good reasons for that. Let's uh, try and make them reasonably simple. And then Obviously, an important one. It says Australia here. Neil, what is the official title of this? We thing? use we use Australia in our curriculum to refer to the country and the the continent of New Zealand and the the islands as well. Yeah, because it, it seems to be the more recently Australia will be used. But I remember being at school and it being Oceania, Australia. Yeah. But it seems like more recently it, Australia has been the the term. Um, what do you reckon? Does it get covered much in, in primary school in England? No, not at all, really. Really? Um, as a as actually a country to do as to do a depth study on an area in that continent, I wouldn't say you would. Yeah, you, I mean, obviously you could, but I wouldn't think it'd be the highest leverage thing that you could do to draw out natural links between other areas. Um, I think if you had some freedoms, it'd be really interesting. So obviously you could do the whole deportation and the gold rush and, you know, and obviously there are some pertinent issues about um, migration and invasion that you can obviously look at and the, the way that the indigenous people were you know, horrifically treated by imperial, um, you know, um, empire, you know, the English empire, the British empire and things like that. But so I think that, you know, if you're an academy and you have those freedoms, I guess you could say it was a solid B perhaps, but if you're an LA school where you don't have those freedoms, C. So I guess mm. that B, for me, that B, because obviously the listenership, we don't know who it is, um, that BC um, point, I think, would make the most sense. Yeah, to me, I'd briefly touch on it, like when I did rivers, and then we did with Jane Rocks and Soils, so we were looking at land forms, we briefly looked at some features of Australia. I think they were actually just in Australia, the country, but we briefly looked at some physical features, but I wouldn't. I can't see doing a, an actual study of it over any yeah. other continent. Yeah. We certainly include it in the, the quote unquote pub quiz part of it, you know, what is the capital of Australia? Because everyone always says it's Sydney, when you know, it's obviously not. Um, we look at, you know, the highest mountain, the longest river and that kind of thing, but nothing kind of more than that. 
That's kind of era, by the way, in case people thought I was uh, dodging out of actually not knowing what the uh, capital of Aust uh, Australia was. I knew enough that it wasn't Sydney, but not enough to know what it actually was. And I, I'm aware. Yeah, because you know that that's, that's the way some people who we know would have interpreted it as an opportunity to, to say yep. that. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think th th there's simply not enough time to study the whole world of primary. And so, so I think it's fair. No. And then the last one is Antarctica. Well, see, that one you would definitely, because Key Stage 1 have to learn about the hot and cold areas of the world. So they definitely, I mean, you'd definitely do something on it at Key Stage 1. I don't know what that means about where we put it. What, what does your gut say? What do you think of that? Oh, is, is this important? I suppose it, it does sound important. Yeah. I mean, I think it's important. It's just that it you would do it, but you wouldn't spend as much time on it. But I think you have to you have to look at it, don't you? You have to look at the polar climates. Are you opting out of this I mean, one? <laughs> no, I'm really <laughs> interested to what Victoria has to say, because I reckon this could be one that we might... Um, profoundly disagree on oh really yeah we do a unit on antarctica in year six and we go really in depth in it and planning it it was really really fascinating um and we link that up with um so we look at the idea of um like tourism as well and what you know so she kind of get rid of that idea you know people only visit um hot warm places and how um and the tourism in Antarctica has increased over time and actually how, how that's impacted um, the climate and things like that in, Antar in Antarctica. Um, and then we combine that with um, uh, an explorer's topics. So then we do a bit of history with um, Scott and Admondson and the kind of the race to the, um, the South Pole um, and all of that kind of stuff. So I personally, when having to do that, I found it really fascinating. So for me, it's, a, and as Victoria says, you know, it's not, you do then look at that, that extends their understanding um, at key stage one as well from having done that. So for me, um, and obviously there's a lot, you know, the idea you know, we do send it's the one, one constant where the people don't live um, all, all year round, but we'll send scientists off every, you know, Kind of six months to live there and do experiments and stuff like that so I think it's got some utility that way so for me um I'd put it in um a yeah excellent so just to recap then we've got S South America and Europe A North America and Antarctica A slash B Africa and Asia and then B slash C Australia and obviously you guys have explained really well the context behind those decisions. Um, you happy enough with how the tier looks? Yeah, I think so. I'm still just not quite comfortable on South America and North America. South America being... Oh. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I get why. Like, I would probably pick South America over North America, but maybe it's just the idea of saying that South America is more important, but I'm not quite... 